board. First Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 22. And 23 and 24 and 25. But we'll start with verse 22. We want to get, our, get some people set free today. But you've got a part in it. You've got to enter into what the Holy Spirit is doing. And uh, people can stay in their bondage. But who wants to stay in their bondage when there's a freedom? In fact, the Bible says one of the reasons that we were saved was to bring us into a liberty. You'll read that in uh, Galatians chapter 5. But it says, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Now, I've been set free, and I'm going to stand fast in this liberty wherewith Christ has set me free. And that is our responsibility, so remember that. So let's read that. It's up on the board, verse 22. Very good. Amplified, since by your obedience. Everybody say obedience. obedience. To the truth. You see that in the, on the board? Hmm. Since by your obedience to the truth, through the Holy Spirit, you have purified your hearts for the sincere affection of the brethren. That's powerful. Let's go back and read that again. Since by your obedience, in other words, through obedience to the truth, <coughs> through the Holy Spirit's power, our hearts have been purified. Isn't that amazing? By obeying the truth, our hearts have been purified. Say that again. Maybe it will. I can see this is going to be quite a message. I'll just take my shirt off now. I don't want to get too hot. I think I'll turn the air. How many is too hot? Let's see. You. Too warm over there? Let's turn it. All right. We'll it'll take care of that right now. Now, I want you to get that. You know, you we could read a scripture, but we got to draw from it. It's, it's through obedience. Obedience to what? Everybody say truth. Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. That's why I try to do nothing that would quench him or be disobedient to him. Because I know it's through, uh, it is by my obedience to the truth, which is God's word, that our hearts are purified. I don't know about you, but I used to, years ago when I first became a, a, a Christian, I had every type of bondage I think that anybody could have. Can anybody identify with that? A couple of folk, the rest of you, you were born saints. Okay, good. <laughs> but not me. I knew that I was a sinner, and I knew that I sinned, and I enjoyed my sinning. Because the Bible says sin is fun for a season, but afterwards, whoo, is death. So I said, God, purify my heart. How can I get my heart purified? Oh, God, I want to walk pure before you. And I come across this scripture, and the Holy Spirit made it alive to me. By me being obedient to the truth, through the power of the Holy Spirit, my heart was purified for the sincere affections of the brethren. I began to love people regardless of their sins. Now, boy, when you're a pastor you, or an elder or a, a minister or even a teacher, you've got to love people just like they are. And the way you'll come to that position in your life is that you, through your obedience to the truth, you will allow the Holy Spirit to purify your hearts in which you will have an affection for the brothers and sisters. That when you do see them do something wrong, you don't point it out to anybody else, but you are so compassionate with that affection in your heart 
You say, oh God, strengthen my brother, strengthen my sister. Oh Lord, it changes your whole attitude and your whole picture of people. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? So you've got to understand what I'm talking about. Now, how do you come to that place? By obeying, everybody say, by obeying the truth. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, your heart, my heart, our heart will be purified to love the brothers and sisters. Now, if you're struggling in that area, I know what it is to struggle in that area. All of us do because we've all been there. Now, I like little illustrations. Who can I pick on? Willie's up there. Can't get hold of him. Put your put your hand in there, Charles. <laughs> Charles just volunteered, Willie. <laughs> well, good. Okay. Now. How, how many of you know that if I don't have that love for Charles and I see a defect in him, which I'm sure there's not, right? <laughs> Let's just say Charles is mad at me. He's got resentment towards me. I, I didn't do what I should have done for him or... I looked at him wrong, or he thought. By the way, let me say this before we go too deep in this. Sometimes you think people are mad at you, and they're not. It's all in your imagination. Anybody experience that besides me? Sure we are. Let's be honest. And that will cause the devil to bind you all up. You can't pray, you can't sing, you can't dance, you can't have any joy. Remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if God could rob you of your joy, you have just lost your strength. So let's just say Charles is mad at me. We went, let's say we went out to dinner together, and uh, the waitress brought some ice cream or cake, you know, and uh, I ate some of his, and he got upset about that. I am mad at you. <laughs> now, the key, the key of it is, the key, see the key right there? The key is that he needs to forgive me, because if he don't, he, now I want you to walk around. Go ahead, walk now. Who's he dragging with him? The person that he's holding resentment. Somebody tell me, how's he going to get loose from that coconut? Hmm? What is the, what's the word? What did they say? Let go. All right, forgiveness. He's got to forgive me. If he doesn't, he's going to be tied to me. Now, can you imagine you got resentment, let's say, against 20 people? So you're tied to 20 coconuts. One is going this way, one is going that way. Your nervous system is just about had it. You are becoming the coconut. <laughs> so you got to get rid of it or you're going to become the coconut. You're going to wear that coconut. And let me tell you what's going to happen. If, you don't, if he doesn't forgive me, somebody tell me what's going to happen. His health is going to go bad. Sickness is going to come upon him. Then he will go uh, to drugs, alcohol, certain prescriptions that will bring him into bondage. Now, I know there's a balance in everything, so don't get all worked up when I said that. Okay, I know there's a balance in all things. How many know I know that? I mean, I don't live 80 years and don't know something. Give me the benefit of the doubt, okay? He can all, struggle all he want, roll down the floor, holler, jump, you know, just holler, 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 holler. He is not going to get free until he 
forgives me and say, Lord, why do I always have this problem in my heart not being able to forgive somebody? Then he hears a message from Pastor Bob. (laughs) Charles, through obedience of the truth, you will be set free. And the truth is that you can't love me because you haven't been obeying the truth, which is forgiveness. If you don't forgive those who has trusted past against you, your heavenly Father cannot forgive you, and the devil will just hound you to no end, day and night, 24-7, might end up with, you can struggle. Thank you, Coconut. No, you, you know. You, you got, no, the, uh, I got the key. You, you will want to do that. You ain't going to get free until you come to me. Let's say that, that you owe me an apology. You got to come to me. Now, that, how about the pride? Oh, the pride. Whoop. Now the pride. All right. So what's going to happen is, He's going to suffer another week, two weeks, three weeks, struggle, holler. Where are you, God? I can't worship you. What's going on in my life? Why do I feel this way? Why don't you talk to Pastor Bob? I'm going to talk to that critter. He's a hypocrite. See, the enemy is just playing with his mind all the time. Now go, they take him to the hospital. His heart's beating 25,000 miles an hour. Anxiety has come up. Say, Bob, how did you know that so well? I've been there. <laughs> I've been to the hospital. <laughs> I know what it is, but not no more I'm free. Look at my face and you can tell I'm free, and I'm going to stay free. Have you got us, Willie? Still got us on the camera? Okay. Okay, what do you He's got to forgive. But he's got to humble himself. How many of you know God gives grace to the prod? Huh? Y'all been reading the Bible on me, haven't you? God gives grace to the humble. That means you've got to humble yourself. Yes. Forgive me. Sure, I forgive you. You can have my ice cream anytime you want. Thank you, partner. <laughs> Drop the coconut. Oh, free at last. Now go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, woo, woo. Free at last. Hey, I'm 240 pounds. You pull me around. You got a job on your hand. Notice the lock. Just whoop. It just popped open. Free at last. See, it's simple. But we make it so complicated, and how many times in relationships, we don't have relationships with people because deep down there's resentment towards them, and we're tied to that individual by a chain. And wherever they go, they're dragging you. And every time you think of them, you think of them, I'd like to send him to the moon. How many has ever been there? On my way in the rapture, I'm going to check the moon to see if those people are still there that I put up there. (laughs) Now, I'm telling it like it is. You might not like it, but that's the way it is. I've been around a long time. You're not going to get free until you forgive that individual. Yeah, but you don't know what that individual has done to me. It doesn't make no difference. You have to forgive them from your heart. Now, that's God's word. That's not mine. I just passed the message along. How many children are holding resentment towards their parents? How many parents is holding resentment towards their parents? Well, my dad and mom always showed partiality to my youngest sister or my oldest sister or my oldest brother.
Folks, how many love me just a little bit? <laughs> I ha I've had in my life, I've had to forgive a lot of folk. And people don't understand why the Bible doesn't come alive to them. They read the Bible, but they don't really understand it because they've got this deep resentment in their heart towards somebody. I had a man one time stand up in church. He says, Pastor Bob, I forgive you. And I said, well, brother, I, I, I appreciate that <laughs> because if you really do forgive me from your heart, then you'll be set free. And then I thought, well, what did I do? <laughs> Maybe it's something I didn't do. Hello? Sometimes you see it's not what we do, but it's what we don't do, and, and folks will get mad at us. And I want you to know this morning, I have no awe in my heart against nobody. And when I teach and preach like this, I'm not after nobody. I had a man come up to me one time. He said, Pastor Bob, you read my mail. I said, how do I read your mail? Well, everything you said, you were talking to me. That's the way the Word of God is. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, I want to say something. I love everybody, but I want to say something. You can hear this message. You can walk out. You say, well, I don't believe it. Ha, 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 ha. You are not going to fool God. You are not, let me say that again. You're not, you're not dealing with the preacher. You're dealing with God. Oh, that's a new revelation to some folks, isn't it? We're dealing with God. He knows everything about us. But listen, he's not here to condemn us because we have that hurt in our heart towards somebody. He wants to expose that, that you might be set free and be shaken free from that resentment and become that person that you are in Christ. Every person that loves the Lord goes to the light to be purged and cleansed. The Bible says those that reject the light run from the light. I run to the light. I want to be exposed. Everything in me, I want God to expose that I can be set free and enjoy the liberty of the Spirit of God. Can we understand that? Getting truthful with God. Because, see, I think once you come to that realization of how much God loves you, that He is not to condemn. He's not come to condemn. He's come to set you free from all your bondages. Now, only the Holy Spirit, as I preach, will show you certain things here this morning that you need to deal with. And the Holy Spirit's been given to us to teach us now, how do you get your heart purified? Tell me. I need a volunteer. So everybody say, by obeying the truth. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our hearts are purified. All right? How are you going to get pure? How are you going to get a pure heart? Uh, Ma'am? Speak to God and read the word. Hmm? Talk to God and read the word. No, that's not, what I, that's not what I said. <laughs> I said. See, you got to keep nailing it. I understand. I remember Michelle's daughter was teaching one day, and she couldn't think of a certain verse, and she said, what was it, Pastor Bob? And I, could, I didn't even know who I was. I was paralyzed. I said, is this is how the people feel when I put them on the spot? Will you forgive me for putting you on the spot? But I'm going to say it again. Our hearts are purified. How? By obeying the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are purified. Not that simple. All right. Somebody volunteer, stand up and tell me. How's your heart purified? See, you can't do it because you didn't hear what I said. That's how the word just goes over people's head. All right, there it is right on the board. Since by your obedience, Bob, 
to the truth through the Holy Spirit, you have what? What you got? Well, you said you wanted to volunteer. Oh. Well, what did I need to volunteer for? Huh? Purify my heart, right? I right. Need it. All right. So you, years ago, yeah. people held me down. They made me lick um, a public bathroom floor. Okay. Let's say, Lord, whew, I forgive. Lord, I forgive. I bless those people. I bless those people. I obey the truth. I obey the truth. Therefore, my heart is purified. Therefore, my heart is purified. I release those people. I release them. It's hard to do, Joe. You can do it. I release them. I release them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I take authority over that spirit and I command it to leave him. Loosen him right now. Loosen him right now. Loosen him right now. Loosen him right now. In the name of Jesus. You will not hold him anymore. Loosen him. Loosen him. He obeys the truth. His heart is being purified. Loosen him right now and go. Leave him right now. Yes, you spirit of resentment, bitterness. Go. In Jesus' name. Just let him on the floor. Let him on. Ah, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Loosen him. Loosen him. Loosen him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being. Just lay there. Lord, just cover him with the blood of Jesus. Protect him, Lord. And I thank you for that power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. You'll never get free. You'll never get free. I want to say something here. The body of Christ as a whole. How many has ever been to the doctor? Let me see your hands. Everybody look at me. Look at the hands. All right. You feel so free and say, I've been to the doctor. And that's good. Doctors are good. How many has ever been delivered from an evil spirit? Ooh. There's a couple of honest ones. But it's harder. It's hard. it, now I'm, listen, I'm human too. I'm human. Susan cast some demons out of me. How would you like to have a wife to cast demons out of you? And it's the preacher too. <laughs> huh? If I'm not going to be honest, how am I going to help you? You have to be honest. God knows it. Because you'll go through all type of hell. But you've got to recognize the truth. You've got to be obedience to the truth. Now listen to this. All of a sudden, this truth, I know we looked at this obedience to the truth, which is the Word of God, and that's true. And I'm going to give you another side of the truth. When you hear the Word of God, when you hear a teacher or a preacher speak the Word of God, and you know what he has spoken is true about you. And you're not going to be obedient to that truth through the power of the Holy Spirit to set you free. Are, are you hearing me? What you've heard me preach on this morning, if you're not going to be obedient to that truth that I have preached, then your heart is not going to be purified and the devil... It's going to run shotgun over you all the days of your life, and you're wondering, why don't God bless me? He can't bless you because you're holding on to the devil's stuff. I always like to give this little illustration. This usually wakes people up. Hey, anyone before, so I'll just <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> The big 5-0. That'll deliver some folk, won't it? I heard Susan. What, dog? Oh, okay, dog. Well, let's go. Let's, here's a five. That ain't worth it, is it? <laughs> Just pretend that's 50. I remember the time if I had $5, seriously, back, back in 1942, $5, let me tell you something. I could, I could, I could go to the movie, 11 cents. Get me a uh, Pepsi Cola for six cents. A big Clawson. How many remember Clawson Bakery? Clawson Bakery with icing on it. One, two, three, four, five. It's about that big. Icing about a quarter inch thick. And I'd buy one of those and drink my Pepsi, eat all those rolls, and go home and eat dinner. And I've only spent, I only spent six cents, 11 cents for the movie, and I think it was 10 cents for the rolls. 
Look at the extra money I had. How many feels that if I give that to you, it would set you free to some degree? Look at the big smile on that teenager. <laughs> Does that mean they would sort of set you free? Huh? Huh? <laughs> See, I'm handing it to her, but how many know she's got to accept it? Look at it. <laughs> See, you got to receive the truth. You got to receive the blessing. So, through our obedience to the truth, whether it's in the Word or a teacher or a preacher is preaching it, you're going to obey that truth, and God's going to purify your heart. And whatever's in there, unforgiveness, comes out. And you might not end up on the floor. You might end up on the ceiling. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Okay. Father, I, I, whoo, thank you. Lord, whoo, God, I just want to thank you now. Bless this young lady, Lord. Let her see, Father, the future. Let her see your path. Let her see in the Spirit how you have planned for her life. You have a plan, Father, and the devil has a plan. Help her to see God's plan for her life. Be obedient to that plan, to that truth, and watch her heart be purified. I bless you, my daughter, going out and coming in. The Lord loves you. You belong to God. Stick with him. God will stick with you. Do not fear, do not worry about tomorrow. The marble will take care of itself. Just be obedient today. And know that I love you, saith the Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, God bless you. And that's something, come to church and you're $5 richer. Can't beat that. All right, let's look at that. See, that's where I'm trying to encourage people. Take one scripture <coughs> and meditate on it and break it down. Now. Somebody help Joe up. Help him to be seated. I want somebody to come up and tell me what they see in that scripture. Woo, Joe, this is anointed right here. Woo, I will stand right here. Woo. Somebody come up here and tell me what they see in that scripture. The same thing that I said, but let's hear it. Come on. What do you see in that scripture, Charles? I think we saw it a moment ago. <laughs> you saw Joe come up here now. He's yeah. a grown man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it took for him to come up there and say and admit what vile act yeah. he had to do? Now, I look at a man like that and I say, if he can release something, what am I holding on to? Yeah. Pride's out the window on that. I mean, there's not a lot of men that would get up and say anything like that in front of anybody. That's right. So let that be an example that yeah. If he can be obedient and, and forget that, why can't I forget that my friend called me a name once? Yeah, that's right. Or, you know, they didn't smile at me the right way. Or disappointed me. Yeah. I, I had expectation yeah. and they did not fulfill my expectation. His was a mountain compared to anything anyone's ever done to me. But the mountain, see, they might have made you do that act, but they couldn't stop you from being obedient to Christ. That's good. They couldn't stop you from obeying your heavenly father. And I'll tell you what my dad said to me one time when I was in a pit of vile sewer, digging it out, and everyone was around watching, laughing. Son, you just keep on digging. One day you'll be up here on the mountaintop, and they'll all be still in there waddling around in the sewer. Oh, that's good. And I never forgot that. See, don't ever think where you are momentarily is where you're staying. If you'll be obedient and faithful, God will raise you to where you need to be. And those people who want to play games and just waller in the mud, that's where they're going to stay until they become obedient to the truth. That's right. That's where they live until you become obedient to the truth. Amen. So, Joe, you let that hurt go. You release that. You forget that event. And you now you live for your father and what he has for you yeah. and the glory that is waiting on mm -hmm. you makes that a distant memory. Yeah, amen. 
Just keep on with it. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's what you got to do. What is the Word of God saying to you? Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. It took, I knew, it, I knew what it is. I, 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 let me share this experience one time. I'm going to let you go early today, 4.30. Uh, we had a man come to our church one time when we were on Yaven Hall Road. We, we had a, what they call a storefront. Uh, Paula remembers that. The Shield of Faith met first in our home, and then we got the storefront, and we met there for about seven or eight years. But he came, and he, he was someone that had a ministry of deliverance from evil spirits. So he's talking to the congregation. I'm sitting on the front row. And uh, he says, if, if you think you're being bothered with an evil spirit, come up here, God. That's my ministry. My, see, the industry, if people would understand that certain men have certain types of anointing and ministry upon them, and they have such great power against principalities and powers, they can deliver you just like that by just laying hands and speaking and deliver you. That's their ministry. Like you have in the, in the doctor, uh, uh, doctrinal uh, field. I mean, some of them are, how many of you have a doctor for your left foot and you have a doctor for your right foot? You have a doctor for your eyes? You have a doctor for your whatever? You have a doctor for delivering babies? How many know that? How many would, if you're expecting, how many would go to a doctor uh, that doctors p people's feet? Let me see your hands. Huh? No, you pick your doctor. You, you have confidence in him. He's, lear he's learned that ministry. He's anointed for that ministry. And if you want to set free, get set free, obey the truth through that obedience. And you can sit there and go home with your, with your bondage. And I don't say that to be mean. I say that to help you. But you have your part in your deliverance by submitting to those that God has raised up to help you through this life. So I don't mind I go to the doctor. Now, I know sometimes you might have something that you don't want to tell the church about. It may be a particular area. You know, I'm so open, i got to watch what I'm saying, you know. I mean, I know a lot of people wouldn't say anything about it if they had prostate problems, but not me. Big mouth me, I tell you, I had prostate, you know. Hello, are you out there? But you see, I was, well, I went to a foot doctor. <laughs> How many would say that would be foolish? Yeah, yeah very foolish. Well, I didn't. I, I went to uh, uh, a man that, that's supposed to be good in that area. And I've had, uh, I think it was three operations, okay, three operations, okay, in that particular area. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. For the moment, it was very stressful. It was horrible. But I went through the course. I came out on the other side. And I'm not doing too bad today. It's wonderful to be able to go to the bathroom. In fact, every time I go to the bathroom, I say, Oh, Holy, I have a, what you call a Holy Ghost breakdown. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo! See, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. But when you have a problem in a certain area and you get deliverance, you shout. Somebody shout in this place. Come on. Woo! Man, you shout. That's shout territory. So your intellectual mind tries to figure it out. If you're trying to figure it out with your intellectual mind, you're off track. Way off track. Because I have never been able to figure it out in my mind. But I know when I obey the truth, something happens. Now, I don't know what happened here this morning, but we have prayer meeting here at quarter after nine. And we had some people that came here this morning. And I'm telling you, they got blessed. And we got blessed. They were ministered to, to and for those of us that was ministering, we got blessed by ministering to them. And we just had a Holy Ghost good time because we became one. We were open to the truth. We were obedient to the truth. And God was able to move through that truth. Are you listening? God always moves through His truth. You can't figure out God. If you're trying to figure out God in your intellectual mind, you way off base. 
I mean, you're thousands of miles off base. No, it's a heart faith. It's a heart thing. And that's why the Bible says, If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy what? Heart. God has set you free. If you are obedient to the truth by or through the Holy Spirit, what will God do? Purify your hearts with this sincere affection for the brethren. Some of you are having a hard time loving your mate. Hello? Ooh. Say that again, Bob. I believe it will. Some of you are probably having a hard time loving your mates. That's the answer right there. Obey the truth. I'm going to say a nasty word. Can I say a nasty word in church? How many of you wants me to say this nasty word? I'm going to say it because I love you. Women, submit to your husband. I'm leaving this church right now. Come on, I know I hit a nerve. Might as well hit another. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Woo! The women have got it made. Because Christ loved the church so much, he gave his life and died on Calvary that we might live. Let's move on to something else. Let <laughs> me move something else. What you got? Are you praising the Lord or just you want to say something? All right. We'll let you go shortly. No, no, no. We don't want to go. Well, we're hungry. You're going to order the fried chicken this time, right? Ma'am? You're going to order the fried chicken? We're hungry. Who's going to order fried chicken? You. <laughs> is that a prophecy? <laughs> well, that just fell on me, Pastor. No, let me stop. You know, it, it was really funny. I was just, I was sitting over there, and you said something about uh, somebody, you know, you were reading their mail, and that's, okay, right. you know. If I honestly thought you could figure out my email, I would almost think that you knew how to do that. Um, but, I, you know, I just, I, I want to actually... Um, I want to back you up on that because uh, the unforgiveness. Um, you, you, know, you ever just felt like there's just somebody sitting on you? Oh yeah. And you're just like, man, why am I? Why yeah, am I so heavy? Right. You know, over the last uh, several months, um, you know, I was kind of going through a situation where, and honestly, I don't even remember what the heck it was about. Um, but there was a situation, and you know, there's this really special person in my life, and I really don't know what I'd do without him, and. I don't even know what the problem was. I don't even remember. But I remember that I, I, I kept hearing the devil, oh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just like, no, that's not right. And I don't know. Like, I feel like, I, honestly, I feel like I could do a cartwheel right now if I wasn't afraid that y'all would all have a heart attack. But I just, it's so true. Let it go. Let it go. It is not worth it. If it's something that's, you know, that bad, you just cut your ties and walk no. on. But don't walk around with that unforgiveness. Do not walk around with it because it will weigh you down. I thought I was putting weight on. I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am. Don't tell me. Um, <laughs> but in all actuality, it, it, it is really true. And I am so glad that you're my best friend. Amen. I really am. And I, for, I, I forgive you, and I know you forgive me. And praise God. Praise God for good friends. Praise God for all of you. And Amen. I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Make Amen. sure you go home Amen. and tell somebody you forgive them. Amen. Praise God. That's, that's it. That's it. Now, let me say this. We come to church to learn. We come to church to worship God. We come to church to fellowship with one another. And if you read the Bible all the way through, one of the biggest things that God emphasizes, you have to love the brethren. You read 1 John. If you say... You love God and don't love your brother. You're a liar. The truth is not in you. Now, we've all had bad things happen to us by our parents and by people. And some of those things are hard to forget. But the Bible says, if you want deliverance, forgetting those things in the past because they will beat you up and hound you to no end. 
You can't change a thing in the past. But I'm telling you here today, you can change things into tomorrow by obeying the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. And God will purify your hearts where you can love the brethren. If you say you love God and hate your brother, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And I know some of us are hard to love. Some of you, the rest of you guys are easy to love. Susan is the most precious person to love. That's my wife, Susan. She is so precious to love. I tell her, honey, you the rose, and guess what I am? <laughs> the thorn. And she says, oh, honey, don't say that. I say, yeah, but the, the thorn protects the rose. I know Paul was not married. He talked about his thorn. You remember Paul? He, he wasn't married. I wonder what his thorn was. What the Bible tells us? It was a, an evil spirit that vexed him. It wouldn't rise up and he wouldn't be so proud, you know. But when you walk out of this place today, clear the board. Clear the board. Race it all off through the blood of Christ. The blood has not lost its power. And if you feel like you need to forgive somebody, sometimes God may require you to go to that individual face to face. Other times, it's a matter of saying, Lord, I come before you. I want my heart to be pure. And I'm going to obey the truth. But I forgive. I forgive that individual. Now, I want to say something else. I'm going to let you go. One time, and I was learning this, and I have to learn. How many of you know pastors and teachers and ministers and elders and deacons have to learn too? So we're walking the same road that you're walking. And so, but it took me three months to get that thing out of my gut. That thing was so deep in me. And every day I would get alone with God. I said, God, I forgive them. I bless that Happened to be a woman, naturally. Okay, let's move on from that. Uh, <clears throat> I forgive that woman. And, and that thing was still just clung to my gut. I said, God, I choose to forgive. See, you are what you choose to be, what you choose to do. God will honor your will. And you're obeying the truth, and I choose to forgive her, and I bless her. And I, every day in my prayer life, I would lift her up. And after a while, let me tell you what happens. As I obeyed the truth, I was obedient to that truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Actually, that resentment and bitterness that I had towards that woman disappeared. Listen to this. And I had such a love for that person that came from God because I obeyed the truth. Even though it took three months, I obeyed the truth. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm, and, and, and through the Holy Spirit and His power, I, I purified my own heart, and God did it in my heart, and now I was able to love that same person that I would have loved to send. You ever, you ever, how many of you have ever had a slingshot? You know, put that person, uh, I, I'm thinking one of those big ones. You know one of the big ones that the Romans had, and you, it took about 20 men to back this baby down and put that woman, <laughs> put that woman in there. And, and it, it, boy, just to see her go through the air, huh? <laughs> you, you might, huh? Some of, yeah, some of, yeah, you want a, you want a bigger one, don't you? Yeah, you want to, you don't want to send them to moon. You want to send them to Mars. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, the, that's the flesh. But you put it off. You say, I forgive. And then what amazed me when I was learning these principles, the very person that just, mm, I didn't even want to look at that person. If she come down the street, I'd be on the other side of the street. I'd go around hand to hand. <laughs> Come on, I'll tell it like it is. But God put such a love in me by obeying the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit, my heart was purified to love those that say all manner of things against me, to pray for my enemies, to love everybody. I have ought against no man. I have nothing to boast about 
other than I boast in my God that God did the work in me to love people even when they don't love me or treat me right. I bless them anyway, and I'm free. Say, I'm free. All right. Now we're going to do some forgiving. I want everybody to say, Lord, I forgive my father, my mother, my sisters, my brothers, my husband, my wife, my children, every person that's ever hurt me. I obey the truth, and therefore my heart is purified. I receive that purification into my heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love myself. Oh, this is a hard one. I forgive myself. Come on, say it with your mouth. You're not going to get free unless you say it with your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You've got to say it. All right, say, Lord, I forgive myself. I lose it myself from the past. I'm not going to think about the past no more. I'm free to worship, to love the brethren, and even to love myself in the power ooh, of the Holy Ghost. Now receive it in Jesus' name and give the Lord a shout in the house of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to let you go. If you need extra prayer, come up. Some of our leaders will be here, and we'll be glad to pray for you. Remember now, you're free. And how, are your, how is your heart purified? By obeying the truth through the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. One little scripture. You can preach on it all day long. I can say a whole lot on that scripture. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? Freedom. I know tomorrow is the day that we honor our veterans. Let's enjoy our freedom we have in the natural, but let's enjoy our freedom we have. Now, I don't know about you, but tomorrow, I got this little thing in the back of my uh, head that I might just barbecue some chicken. I mean, after all, it's a holiday. You know, one thing about when I uh, barbecue chicken, if a piece falls in the ground, Susan's not looking. I just pick it up and put it back on the grill. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, how many have done? Don't raise your hands. Stand to your feet. Turn to somebody and say, I love you. Go ahead. Come on. Woo. Give us some music.